there has been a significant and groundbreaking development in the scientific world, one that touches not only on the realms of biology and technology, but also on prophecy, ethics, and mankind's role in the order of creation. For the first time in human history, scientists have successfully engineered living wolf pups, bearing the traits of an animal that has been extinct for over 10,000 years, the dire wolf. The dire wolf, once a fearsome predator during the Ice Age, roamed North and South America. Weighing up to 150 pounds, larger and more robust than today's gray wolves, it captured the imagination of many. In recent pop culture, the dire wolf gained widespread fame thanks to the TV series Game of Thrones, where it served as a symbolic and literal guardian to the show's protagonists. These powerful creatures represented strength, loyalty, and survival. But what was once fantasy has now crept into reality. According to Reuters, the American biotech company Colossal Biosciences has achieved what it calls the first successful attempt at de-extinction. Three genetically engineered pups, named Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi, have been born. These animals are not exact replicas of the extinct dire wolves, but are modern gray wolves with edited DNA to mimic certain dire wolf traits. Yet the implications are massive. They were created using advanced gene editing technologies and this marks the beginning of what many are calling a new era in synthetic biology. We turn now to that remarkable scientific breakthrough. 13,000 years after the last dire wolf walked the earth, scientists say they've now brought them back. Here's our chief national correspondent back up and with the video tonight. Tonight, a howl 13,000 years in the making. In a first for science, biotech company Colossal Biosciences says it brought the extinct dire wolf back to life. To understand how we arrived here, let's look at the numbers. Scientists estimate that about 8.7 million species currently exist on Earth. This includes animals, plants, fungi, and microorganisms. But when we widen the lens to consider Earth's entire biological history, Researchers believe that more than five billion species have existed in total. Here's the shocking part. Over 99% of those species are now extinct. The vast majority of life forms that once roamed, swam, or flew across our planet have vanished. We are only witnessing a tiny fragment of the biodiversity that has ever existed. Each fossil unearthed, each extinct creature studied, represents a page from a massive book of life that is largely unreadable and lost. Colossal biosciences accomplished this using genetic material extracted from ancient dire wolf remains, including a 13,000-year-old tooth and a 72,000-year-old ear bone. DNA from such fossils is often degraded, fragmented by time, temperature, and the ravages of decay. But there, through the miracle of modern technology and powerful gene sequencing machines, fragments were recovered, sequenced, and analyzed. Scientists compared the dire wolf genome with that of modern gray wolves and identified 20 specific genes across 14 locations in the genome that influence key traits such as size, skull shape, jaw structure, and fur coloration. They used a revolutionary tool known as CRISPR, to make precise edits to the genome of modern gray wolf cells, inserting the selected dire wolf genes. CRISPR acts like molecular scissors, allowing scientists to cut and paste specific sections of DNA. The result? A hybrid organism that closely resembles the long extinct dire wolf. These edited cells were used to create embryos, which were implanted into domestic dog surrogates. After a full-term pregnancy, the first engineered pups were born into the world, opening a door that many believed should remain closed. Let's pause and consider what that means. We are living in an age where people are acting as gods. 
To understand how profound this is, we need to revisit the structure of life itself, DNA. DNA has a structure known as a double helix, which looks like a twisted ladder. Each side of the ladder is called a backbone, made up of sugar and phosphate molecules. The rungs of the ladder are called base pairs, which connect the two backbones. These bases, adenine, A, thymine, T, cytosine, C, and guanine, G, pair specifically A with T and C with G and carry the genetic instructions. These sequences of base pairs form the code of life. This code contains all the information needed to make a human being, or a dog, a cat, or a dire wolf. It tells the cells what to become, how to grow, how to replicate, and how to function. It is the language of life, written not with ink, but with nucleotides. This sacred blueprint is what makes every living thing unique. In the hands of God, DNA is sacred. It is His divine signature. But in the hands of mankind, tampering with this code raises profound questions. If scientists are able to do this now with wolves, imagine what they will be able to do with human beings. This is not science fiction. Designer babies are already being discussed. In fact, in some countries, the groundwork is being laid to edit the DNA of human embryos to select for traits like intelligence, height, disease resistance, or even eye color. Some scientists envision a future where parents may one day be able to design their children from scratch. The same way they code software, they may soon code their children. We are not talking about curing a disease or correcting a disorder. We are talking about human beings believing they have the authority to rewrite the sacred code of life, to play God, to determine not just what something is, but what it should be, to make decisions not with reverence, but with ambition. This is not just about wolves. It is about the rise of a mentality that says, we don't need God. We are God. Genesis 11 recounts the story of the Tower of Babel where mankind came together in arrogance to build a tower to the heavens. God responded by scattering them across the earth and confusing their language. Why? Because the heart of the sin was not construction, it was pride. It was mankind saying, we will reach the heavens on our own. The pride of this generation is unlike any we have seen before. It is not just arrogance in attitude. It is rebellion in action. We live in an era where the boundaries set by God are being not only questioned, but aggressively torn down. This is the generation that proudly declares, we know better. It is a pride that refuses to acknowledge the Creator, even while using the very materials He created. With each scientific breakthrough, rather than falling to our knees in awe of God's wisdom, humanity rises to its feet in self-exaltation. Instead of praising God for the mysteries of life, this generation seeks to unravel them with the intent of replacing Him altogether. This is the same spirit that led to the downfall of Lucifer. It is the same pride that fueled the building of the Tower of Babel, a desire to ascend, not in worship, but in domination. Today, that tower is no longer built with bricks and mortar, but with lines of code, genetic sequences, and synthetic biology. The pride of this generation cloaks itself in progress, but is deeply rooted in rebellion. Rather than seeking God's will, many now seek to become gods themselves. They want control over life, death, and even destiny. The reverence for life is being lost, and in its place rises a cold, calculated ambition. This generation may achieve technological marvels, but without humility and the fear of the Lord, those marvels will become monuments to mankind's downfall. Today, we are building digital towers, genetic towers, 
artificial intelligence towers. And once again, humanity is saying, we will be like God. The dire wolf story is symbolic of something greater. It shows us that the line between what is natural and what is synthetic is disappearing. If we can revive an extinct creature, alter its design, and shape it to our will, where do we draw the line? What happens when someone wants to bring back something not from the past, but something that should never have existed in the first place? When humans begin to treat living beings as experiments rather than creations? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah, the earth was filled with corruption, and many biblical scholars believe that genetic manipulation may have played a role in that corruption. Genesis 6 speaks of the sons of God taking the daughters of men and producing offspring known as the Nephilim. Regardless of one's interpretation, the key message is clear. When the boundaries of creation are violated, judgment follows. Colossal Biosciences does not plan to stop with dire wolves. They have their eyes set on the woolly mammoth, the dodo bird, and perhaps even more exotic species. With each success, the threshold of what's considered ethical moves further. The extraordinary becomes normal, and the once unthinkable becomes celebrated. The world is being slowly conditioned to see playing God not as rebellion, but as innovation. But what starts in a lab rarely stays there. Yes, we marvel at the ingenuity, but we must also tremble at the implications. Mankind is no longer asking, should we? But only, can we? We are living in a time prophesied by Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4, where knowledge shall increase. But knowledge without wisdom is dangerous. It is not evil to learn. It is evil to exalt oneself above the Creator. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yet our world doesn't fear God. It fears irrelevance. It fears being left behind in the race for control, power, and progress. But we must remember that true power does not lie in genetic code, nor in test tubes or laboratories. It lies in the one who created life itself. Psalm chapter 139 verses 13 to 14 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Every strand of DNA, every gene, every code in our being is the work of God. The more mankind tries to take that role for itself, the more it steps into dangerous territory. Pride is the root of rebellion. It is what caused the fall of Lucifer and what continues to drive the ambitions of men who reject God's authority. So what should our response be? As believers, we are not called to panic, but to discern. We are not called to fear science, but to recognize when science begins to cross into spiritual rebellion. We must pray for wisdom to navigate these times with a biblical lens. We must also boldly speak the truth, warning others not to fall into the deception of godless innovation. We must ask, are we seeing the rise of a system that seeks to replace God with human power? Are these technological miracles paving the way for a future where humanity is no longer dependent on the Creator, but on itself? Revelation chapter 13 speaks of a time when an image will be given breath and power, a counterfeit creation meant to deceive the world. Could it be that we are laying the groundwork for such deception even now? Let us remain watchful. Let us pray for wisdom. Let us hold firm to the truth that only God has the authority over life and death. 
Yes, the dire wolf has returned in some form. But let us not be so focused on what has risen from the past that we miss what is rising in our present. A world without God. A humanity becoming its own creator. A society no longer kneeling but exalting itself. But make no mistake, God will not be mocked. Every attempt to rewrite His creation, no matter how sophisticated or celebrated, will ultimately fail. His word remains, His authority remains, and His return is near. Let us not be deceived, let us not be distracted, let us be ready 